Over a more than 50-year writing career, Stephen King has never written a novel about zombies. The traditional undead variety, that is. This is a brief video about a trilogy of novels that might be the best zombie novels Stephen King never wrote, but could have. Welcome to the Library Ladder. Jonathan Mayberry is a multiple Bram Stoker award-winning horror, thriller, and comic book writer whose first three novels, known as the Pine Deep Trilogy, were published between 2006 and 2008. Although published as a trilogy, the three books, Ghost Road Blues, Dead Man's Song, and Bad Moon Rising, read more like a single extended novel spanning a month in the small farming town of Pine Deep, Pennsylvania. Pine Deep is a seemingly pleasant and bucolic community where nearly everyone is on a first-name basis. Its claim to fame is that it promotes itself as the spookiest town in America. You see, 30 years earlier, a series of gruesome murders and unexplained phenomena led to awful publicity for the town that significantly tarnished its reputation. In recent years, though, enterprising civic and business leaders decided to embrace that reputational tarnish and transform the community into a tourist attraction centered on the Halloween season. But is it just marketing hype, or is there some truth to the claim? You see, Pine Deep is a community with secrets. Lots of secrets, dark secrets, and a history of strange occurrences. It reminds me a lot of certain small towns in Maine with names such as Castle Rock, Derry, and Jerusalem's Lot. In Mayberry's trilogy, a malevolent force from beyond the grave seeks its revenge on the town, and it's planning it for the height of tourist season, Halloween. Several of the town's kids were involved in or directly affected by the horrific events 30 years earlier. Now all grown up and middle-aged, some of those same kids are being targeted by the evil force that has returned, and they're in a race against time to understand and stop a new rash of mysterious deaths and other occurrences plaguing the town before the evil gets them first. Does that sound a little like Stephen King's It? Although it's a cliché to compare modern horror writers to King, in this case, it's an apt comparison. There are some significant similarities, although the Pine Deep books are set almost entirely in the modern day, without the extensive flashbacks to the parallel childhood storyline decades earlier found in King's horror epic. The main characters in the Pine Deep books include three of the child survivors of the massacre decades earlier. There's Malcolm Crow, a recovering alcoholic ex-cop who now owns a local Halloween-themed store and who designs and operates the town's elaborate and super scary haunted hayride attraction every year. There's Val Guthrie, Crow's fiance, whose family was targeted during the town's so-called Black Harvest Massacre 30 years before. And Terry Wolf, the mayor of Pine Deep, who's tormented both by the prospect of canceling the season's big tourist events and by recurring doubts about his own sanity. And there's 14-year-old Mike Sweeney, the local newspaper boy who's managed to survive an abusive household, fantasizes about being a superhero committed to fighting evil and injustice, and might hold the key to saving the town. Together, they help Mayberry illuminate the shadowy corners of the town and its history. Then in doing so, they help the community itself become a vital and integral part of the story, similar to how Stephen King centers many of his novels on the dynamics, interpersonal, cultural, economic, and eldritch that define a community's character. Also much like King, Mayberry narrates the story using multiple points of view to provide direct insight into the thoughts and feelings of a variety of characters, including some of the less savory ones. Together, those narrative touches reinforce the idea that evil can reside both in the hearts of men and as a kind of moral or psychic residue that permeates the place occupied by a community. The story itself follows a similar path, with human evil taking center stage during the first book, Ghost Road Blues, and the supernatural evil trapped in the place gradually coming to the forefront in the final two books. As Mayberry repeatedly tells readers, evil doesn't die. It waits, it changes, and it comes back. Not surprisingly for a debut, the books are a little rough around the edges in places. Some of the human characters could use a little more nuance. The protagonists are almost unfailingly good. 
and the antagonists are very, very irredeemably bad. Also, the pacing is a little slow at first, and the plot sometimes gets a little sidetracked with extended descriptions and unnecessary conversations between characters, particularly in the first book. These are minor criticisms, though, because the books do a terrific job on the scare front. Mayberry steadily ratchets up the tension, the horror, the action, and the stakes over the course of the three books. There's considerable violence at times, but it doesn't feel excessive or gratuitous, and there are several truly creepy scenes that I think are masterfully done, as well as a show-stopping climax in the third book that has to be read to be believed. I call these books zombie novels at the outset of this video, because zombies feature prominently as the books progress, as do other denizens of the classic horror genre. But these aren't the mindless, shambling, virus-infected corpses of The Walking Dead, nor are they the iconic villains portrayed in numerous films. Instead, these supernatural undead feel real, and really dangerous, animated as they are by a force of pure malevolence. I highly recommend this trilogy to anyone who enjoys the early works of Stephen King, to anyone who craves scares of both the creeping dread and more visceral varieties, and to anyone who's curious to know what happens when the frights on traditional haunted hayrides out in the cornfields become real and deadly. The first book, Ghost Road Blues, was nominated for two Bram Stoker Awards, Best Novel and Best First Novel, and it won the latter award. Mayberry has also written some short stories set in Pine Deep that are collected in his anthology, Darkness at the End of Town. Furthermore, over the past 15 years, Mayberry has established himself as one of the best horror and thriller writers working today. He's the best writer of zombie fiction I've encountered. Those undead creatures figure prominently in several more of his books, including his Rot and Ruin, Joe Ledger, and Dead of Night series. I haven't read Dead of Night, but I can vouch for the other two series. Rotten Ruin is far more than your typical zombie apocalypse fiction inspired by The Walking Dead. Likewise, his Joe Ledger series takes zombie plots and turns them into fast-paced horror-thriller hybrids that on occasion intersect with Pine Deep's history and characters. After reading his Pine Deep books, you might give some of Mayberry's other series a try. I hope you've enjoyed this brief discussion of Jonathan Mayberry's Pine Deep trilogy. What's your opinion of zombie fiction? Are there any other zombie novels you think are worth reading and recommending? Thanks for watching.